the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good and gracious God, we pray that the focus and foundation of our Catholic schools will always be the person of Jesus Christ. May we remember that we are called to work together as part of your universal church to build your kingdom in our midst. Let each of our Catholic schools, no matter how large or how small, whether urban, suburban, or rural, be recognized by its commitment to excellence, its efforts to form the whole child, its hospitality toward all, and its intentional development as a community of faith, collaboration, trust, and love. Help us to view every aspect of our world through the lens of the gospel and the teachings of our Catholic faith. Let every member of our Catholic schools community, Catholic school communities, become a visible example of what it means to put faith into action. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now to Jesus through the hand of Mary. O eternal and uncreated wisdom, O most lovable and adorable Jesus, true, true God and true man, we thank you for the gifts of the Holy Spirit on this past feast of Pentecost. Through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit tonight and for our future as a parish and as a parish grade school, we run to the intercession of your most holy mother, whom you have given us as a mediatrix, and through whom we hope to obtain from you contrition, pardon for all of our sins, and to acquire and persevere in wisdom. We salute you, Mary Immaculate, Queen of heaven and earth, as our patroness, to, to whose command all that is under God is submitted. We salute you, O secure refuge of sinners, whose mercy fails no one. Hear the desire that we have for divine wisdom as we strive to propel our grade school into the future with holiness and grace. And to be more faithful to your son we have, than we have been up to until today, we choose you, O Mary, for our mother, our patroness, our mediatrix, and our guide. Present our, we present our school to your son, and we ask that you present our school to your son. Grant us the grace to obtain the true wisdom of God and, and admit us, and admit us for this reason into the number of those whom you love, instruct, lead, nourish, and protect. O faithful virgin, make all of us perfect disciples, imitators of incarnate wisdom, Jesus Christ, your son, our students, our parents, our faculty, our staff, and our parish. Make us attain by your intercession and example the fullness of his age on earth and the fullness of his glory in heaven. To Jesus through Mary as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So first, I'd just like to thank all of you for coming. Can you hear in the back? Are we okay with the sound? Excellent. Um, it's a beautiful night outside, and it's the end of the school year, and I know it's a crazy time, but we rate, greatly appreciate your commitment to being here and to our school and our parish, um, and we will do our best to keep on track tonight um, to respect your time. We here are very proud of the Catholic education that we provide um, and believe that our teachers, students, and our families are some of the best around. We'd like to continue the important work we do here for many years to come. And to do that, we recognize the need for it to be intentional, and which led us to this strategic planning process that we're going to outline for you tonight. We started this journey about a year ago, and we're excited to share what we've developed over that time period. I'd like to thank you to everyone, because I know many of you here tonight have completed a survey or participated in a focus group or shared your opinions with us in one way or another. We also had a group of very dedicated people who served on the strategic planning committee. I'll recognize them in a couple of minutes, but we could not have gotten to this point without all of their support and help. I would like to thank the pastor, members of Pastoral Council, including President John Nygaard, who's here tonight, and Dr. Jackie Lichter, a senior consultant from Meitler, who is also here tonight, 
She helps facilitate the development of this plan and will be presenting tonight along with Monsignor and myself. So now I'm going to turn it back over to Monsignor, so he's going to tell you a little bit about what to expect tonight. So just, just a rough overview, um, and if you picked up an agenda that you'll basically see it. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do with the help of Dr. Lichter is um, uh, Mrs. Joyner and Dr. Lichter, and I'll chime in at one point, um, a presentation of the plan. Then we're going to break up into small groups. Um, to be honest, I don't remember how we decided to do that, so we'll, but we'll be breaking up into small groups um, for about 20 minutes. We're going to invite you to introduce yourselves, tell your connection to St. Mary's Parish or the school, and discuss the goals, the plans, the slides that we presented to you this evening. Find out what, plan, what of the slides gives you hope and if there are any questions that you have. And then we're going to try and facilitate one person from that group uh, giving feedback to the whole group, kind of reporting back as what would be normal process in an event like this, um, sharing the key points to discuss, and then um, Linda Joyner will come back and do some of the next steps. And then uh, either I, if I have to duck out, either I'll do the final prayer and the blessing, or I'm going to invite Father uh, Lynn to do that as well. So he's there. Good. Excellent. So thank you once again for uh, coming, and let's jump into the heart of the matter. So full disclosure, before we go any further, we are recording, you may have noticed tonight, so just kind of spread that out to people who couldn't make it here this evening. So many of you probably know this, but St. Mary School has been serving families in our community for 107 years. That's a long time. Um, we are proud that we've received exemplary recognition multiple times from the Archdiocese of Milwaukee, most often in the area of mission and Catholic identity. And we're proud of the high school readiness of our students, how well they do and how the good feedback we get from our kids to go off to high school. I've heard it said before, there's no such thing as a status quo. You're either moving forward or you're moving backward, but there's no possibility of just standing still because if you stand still, you're moving backwards because everyone else is passing you by. So in the interest of moving forward, with the best interests of our students in mind, we decided to undergo the strategic, to take that strategic look at what the next level of excellence would look like for our school. This led us to the development of this long-term plan with the assistance of Meisler, Meitler, which is a faith-based consulting firm. So the goals we'll be sharing with you tonight were identified and created from the data that was collected throughout the process. Key to the development of that plan was the Strategic Planning Committee. This group included representation from parents and faculty, as well as representatives from school and parish leadership committees. And I know there's several of the members here tonight. Would you please stand if you are a member of the Strategic Planning Committee? Give them a round of applause. Like I said earlier, we started this journey last fall and completed it February, March. So it was like three, four hour meetings at a time when we get together. So we greatly appreciate all their hard work and input. Um, at this point, I want to introduce um, Dr. Jackie Lichter to you. And she is going to tell you a little bit about the whole process and some of the data that we gathered. Hi there. My name is Jackie Lichter. I have worked with Meitler on a full-time or part-time basis for about seven years. On the way out here in the last five years, I've probably worked with over 50, 60 schools doing strategic planning in more than 15 or 20 states. Our company's been in business for over 50 years, and we've worked in probably 47 of the 50 states in the United States right now. So um, we know a lot about schools. We know a lot about Catholic schools, but we didn't know about your school, and that's where the work began. And so our process is one in which we hire only practitioners, so people who work for our company come from the work of parish work, diocesan work, schools, their principals, superintendents, etc. My background is in Catholic education. I worked as a theology teacher at a large Catholic high school. I worked as a director of curriculum and instruction, and I was principal of a regional Catholic school located on three campuses before coming to work with Meitler. 
So what we did here was gather a lot of data, and thank you to everyone who's been a part of that, through focus groups, surveys, demographic data, running your address list, looking at trends, trends in the community, trends in the broader Catholic community. Um, we gathered a lot of data, and then we use what we call triangulate that through conversations with everyone who has a hand in the school that we could think of. Most often that happened in focus groups because it's almost impossible to meet with each and every one of you, but your opinions matter, your voices matter. And so we would meet with focus groups of parents, we met with students, uh, the faculty, uh, some parish members, advisory councils, pastoral councils, so really whoever we could get in front of us we met with. There was another person on the team here on site, and in addition to that, I had a whole team behind me at the company that was helping with things as well, giving input and feedback into the process. It was really a pleasure. You've got a really amazing school community, parish community, and broader community supporting Catholic education here in Menominee Falls. It was exciting to work with this group and to see people who want to see a school succeed. That's what really struck me, is this is a community that wants Catholic education to continue for years to come. And that's not always the case. We enter some communities where it's a little bit of doom and gloom, but that's not what you find here. You find people very committed to the formation of young people in Catholic education and religious education. And that really gives me hope, and it gives our company hope um, to know that this is continuing. So the data that we gathered, do we, do we want to go onto a slide, or do you want to continue? So when we talk about a strategic plan, we kind of have it separated into these boxes. We want to make sure that a strategic plan is mission driven, so we really work with not only the mission, our mission of getting souls to heaven, that's our biggest mission, but what is the mission of this parish, what is the mission of the school, and to make sure that everything is aligned to that. We want it to be comprehensive, so we use the national standards and benchmarks for effective Catholic schools um, as a starting point. In each chapter, all of the goals are aligned to those national Catholic standards and benchmarks. Visionary, from the very beginning we say, imagine 10 years from now, you come back in, there's no boundary, what does a school look like in 10 years? So we try to think really big picture. Some of it may or may not even be feasible, but let's not discredit it simply because of that. Let's just think big and see how great we can become. Um, long range, but it has to be realistic and achievable. So everything's measurable, so that when we walk away, we don't completely walk away, but when we leave, Linda and her team, Monsignor and his team, it's actionable. This plan, you can say, okay, that goal is done, we're moving on to the next one. And there's checkpoints for each one of them. The Meitler plans don't tend to sit on a shelf like a lot of strategic plans, I think because the process is one that involves all of you and um, the implementation plan is very achievable. Integrated, owned, it's very data-based, everything's grounded in data and credible. So information gathering, 70% of families responded to the survey, that's exciting. 89% uh, of faculty responded, so we feel as if we've captured a great number of those families and the input that they gave. Uh, lots of focus groups and meetings that I spoke about already, um, all with the same message, we love our school. I mean, that was clear. And areas for improvement. So where we worship, I thought this was interesting because the parishes and the school are very tied together, and this being a parish school, we thought it was important to also find out more about where are people worshiping. Uh, so 92% said they belong to St. Mary Parish, 58% of those attend Mass regularly, 27% attend Mass at a different parish, and 4% attend Mass at St. Anthony. So it kind of gives you a picture of who's in the school and who completed the survey. And now we're on to goals. So we'll talk more about that. Lots of information there that I just presented to you and we'll have an opportunity to ask questions in a bit about that. Okay, uh, so the goals that we developed were aligned with the four key domains that are identified in the national standards and benchmarks for effective Catholic schools. And this is part of our accreditation process that we have to um, set goals and we achieve our accreditation based on those uh, standards and benchmarks which those four domains are mission and Catholic identity, academic excellence, operational vitality, and governance and leadership. Catholic identity is an integral component of student life that's led to our exemplary recognition. The faith life of our students is fostered through sacramental prep, 
mass attendance, daily prayer, and religious instruction. Catholic identity and our mission to live Jesus will continue to be pillars of our Catholic school. It might be a little small in the back. I'll read you the goals that we set for this area. St. Mary's Parish School's leadership will find ways to participate with the parish in all areas of Catholic life, recognizing and instructing students, faculty, and staff on the integral relationship between the parish and school, strengthening the school's Catholic identity, and embracing opportunities to educate the students and families on traditional expressions of Catholicism characterized in the liturgical experiences at the parish. Beginning with the school year 2023-24, St. Mary Parish School will eliminate the parishioner-non-parishioner -parishioner tuition rate to encourage families to select a parish community that is aligned to their own liturgical preferences. St. Mary Parish School will explore the option of changing the name of the school to better serve and include all families in the parish in the region seeking Catholic education. And you know that might be shocking to change the name, but that's one of the things we realized through this process. Um, the Archdiocese in Milwaukee has been encouraging schools to, Catholic schools, to think beyond their parish to be more regional, and that's what they're calling them. So you've seen over time um, schools coming together in different parts, like Waukesha Catholic was four schools, and now that's one section. There are some where it's just two schools combined. We don't have other Catholic schools right here with us, but we also have four different par Catholic parishes that and we're the school. So just that, just extending beyond our borders. So it's just thinking a little bit bigger that way. And the key word is explore. Yes. explore. <laughs> yeah, which is something that we thought was valid to think about. You know, how welcoming are we to other Catholic parishes? You know, when we're St. Mary, we're aligned with this, which we want to stay. So it's kind of a tricky thing. Um, and then as far as the tuition goes, we felt like that too with the other parishes would make us more, more open to them or people wouldn't feel like if they were attending St. James, they had to join St. Mary in order to bring their kids here to school. Academic excellence is our next domain. Um, the, our academic curriculum enables students to consistently score above national averages on standardized testing and we're looking forward to growing those academic offerings that set us apart from other schools. St. Mary Parish School's leadership will pursue a curricular niche, stream, or some school practice that clearly differentiates our school from other Catholic and public schools in our area. Our second goal is to expand the academic offerings at St. Mary to include after-school programs, clubs, activities, classes, etc and to consider extending them to families who homeschool their children in the area. St. Mary will look at new opportunities to measure and improve student outcomes and teacher effectiveness. Dr. Lick is going to take over the next domain. Okay. So one of the things we, one of the data points we gather are, are a lot of enrollment data and um, just to look at that right now, I'll look at this here. We um, take the total enrollment, track it over these years, and you'll see here um, the capacity by grade. And we like to look at how is the staff, how are they staffed for the number of students here? And we try to get that capacity number. So right now there's room for growth. We know that. We didn't, it's not something we learned that we didn't already know. Linda said we have room to grow. So there's a lot of opportunity for growth here. Um, if you look, there was 309, 287, 235, 219, and 177. The word needs to get out because this is a jewel of a school. We heard that over and over and over again. It appears as if um, the message of all the good that is happening here isn't getting out in the public as it could be. This is an interesting map. We look at where all the families come from. So in taking all of the addresses of the families enrolled in the school, we create the scatter map and it gives you a picture of where the families are coming from. And you'll see that it's pretty widespread and it actually goes over all those zip codes that are listed there, of course, with the two primary ones being the 051 and the 022. But you're drawing families from multiple zip codes, which also is an opportunity. We look at, okay, is there opportunity for growth? Yes, there is. And then we looked at St. Mary Parish families. 
the zip codes that they're coming from, with how that number has changed. So in the zero to four, it's hard for me to do this without taking this out. Do you mind? <laughs> I'm used to doing this. So what we did is we take those zip codes and then we look at the population growth in those zip codes. So if we look up here, the zero to four up in that top, it's showing that there's a 1% growth. So 1% is, is good. We see that a stable or slight growth in that zero to four. So that's families in those two zip codes with children zero to four coming in in the next five years. So that gives you a sense that we're not declining. We can continue. There's a slight growth, but it mostly it's a stable number. And then if we look at the five to nine, in that five to nine age group, in those two zip codes, we're seeing a little bit of a decline. Now, anything greater than negative three or positive three, we would see as significant. So in that five to nine, in those two zip codes, you're looking at a, a drop in families with children that age. So what does that mean? That means we've got to think ahead and we have to say, okay, that population in those two zip codes isn't going to be there. Where else can we go look for students? So it's a data point that tells us what can we do about it, not gloom and doom per se. So in um, operational vitality, which is our next domain, we have four different kind of groups for the, the goals, enrollment, facility, advancement, and financial. So in our enrollment goals, a comprehensive enrollment management program with measurable and targeted enrollment plan encompassing marketing, recruitment, admissions, and retention will be developed. And this speaks to what Jackie was talking about. We have to watch the demographics of our community and then figure out where we're best going to find the students. Um, the Sussex area is one I live in, and I know for sure that's a huge growing area. Uh, as far as um, the second goal was to enroll in the Wisconsin School Choice Program to make Catholic education available to more students. And we were able to accomplish that this year for the next school year. And the beauty of that was we were able to help several families in our current school community that um, were struggling to pay their way and could meet that, that, um, the requirements of that program. As far as facilities, we will research the feasibility of expanding the function of the library or computer lab to a media center. And we have been uh, working on the computer lab. We have a, we've contracted with a designer who is laying that out as more of a makerspace stream sort of space for our students. We will have a, house a lot of technology and innovation. We will consider using a portion of, this is going to be the most exciting thing I say tonight, the excess funds through the Love One Another campaign to purchase and erect recreational playground equipment on the school grounds. So this, I believe, will be my legacy that we have a playground after I'm not here anymore. And you too. That will be the only thing they remember about I us. I thought I would never do another parking lot project after St. Anthony's, and it looks like I have. <laughs> and I believe, Kristen, do we have the plans? I think we had plans that you can kind of take a look. They're just drafts of initial plans just to get the excitement going. Um, advancement, we have an annual fund, but we know that we could do a lot better job with the annual fund, so we're trying to really sink our teeth into making that more successful so we can eliminate the need for multiple fundraisers. We also plan to um, grow an endowment fund. An endowment fund for a school is just a, hopefully a huge chunk of funds that's sitting off the, to the side and then is invested that would help us in case if we had declining enrollment or the roof was leaking and we needed a, uh, something fixed that way. And it ensures the, um, kind of like the legacy of our school for our future. Sorry. And financial goals. The tuition rates will be reduced to one category for all families applying to enroll in the K through eighth grade, which we mentioned earlier. The process for awarding tuition assistance will be uh, kind of restructured so it's more strategic in growing enrollment. We will continue to exercise financial best practices while improving communication about school finances, in particular how fundraising dollars are spent. 
And our fundraising is typically part of our general operating budgets, so we don't typically raise money for, you know, buying new computers or things like that. We might for the playground a little bit extra, but other than that. Our last area is governance and leadership in the last domain. Our goals for this area are that the school advisory committee will provide visionary and appropriate leadership to ensure the future vitality and sustainability of the school. And that group has been revitalized. I think we had probably three members after COVID and now I think we have a good solid nine or 10 um, parents that have stepped forward to help us out with that. And this group will be instrumental into helping us put this strategic plan into action. So if you are interested in helping us out, we always, we will not turn you down. Uh, the pastor at St. Mary and the school committee will oversee the implementation of the strategic plan with the support of parents, teachers, and other stakeholders. And in consultation with the pastor and the principal, the school will consider adding an additional layer of leadership to the administrative team to oversee the advance and academic components of the school. And I'm happy to say that that was approved. We are in the process of interviewing right now for a director of teaching and learning. So while playground equipment might be bright and shiny and colorful, and well, I guess the parish has been dreaming about playground equipment forever and a day, it's bright and shiny and it's tangible, and we're excited about it. But the exciting news that I want to share with you is a while ago, uh, one of our longtime parishioners, Bill Donlinger, uh, passed away and left a sizable portion of his estate to us for debt reduction. As you know, we paid off our debt, so no debt to reduce. I called the family and told them that we would like to expand the endowment for St. Mary Parish Grade School, and they said absolutely. Um, so we were going to be putting $565,000 into the endowment for the grade school effective immediately. Um, which is an amazing, amazing addition to giving us the stability and the um, inspiration, if you will, for the advancement of our school as we project ourselves into the future. So we're going to be sending the family an extended uh, uh, thank you note for that. But because the grade school was always important to them as well, it became a no-brainer to move it from debt reduction to our parish grade school. So um, let's in thanksgiving for them, let's offer them the family and applause. And for the repose of his soul, let us pray um, one more Hail Mary to our Blessed Mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Bill, rest in peace. You were the first to hear it here, so it's good to hear it. <laughs> All right, so it's time to have a little conversation. So I think what we'd like for you to do is to circle up in like small groups of maybe five or six, since there's so many of you here. Um, I have some clipboards up here. So what we'd like for you to do in your group, if one person maybe could take the lead and write notes. What about what you've heard tonight gives you hope about our school and the future? And any questions that you might have, um, put those on there. And then if some of you want to share out at the end, we'd be happy to, to do that. Um, and how much time do they have? We're going to take about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. We'd love to hear from you. Questions, comments, hope you like to Any lingering thoughts? Um, really, the table is open, and if one person from each group would be willing to summarize what you talked about, that would be very helpful. And anything else you want to add? I don't mean to take over your microphone, sorry. It's part of my nature. So, I'll come as close as I can with this recorded mic, and we'll see what we can find out. So, why don't we start with you? Okay, let's start. Um, let's see. Um, we, we had a great discussion, so thanks to everybody in the group. Um, I would say we didn't actually get to what we what brings us hope, but I would say people in this room certainly bring us hope and the excitement and the passion that we all have for this school 
brings us hope, for sure brings me hope. Um, I think the one question we had that we were really thinking about the most was, you know, this just the concept of, I'll just call it decoupling from the parish, um, to cast a wider net, to get a bigger enrollment. Certainly, um, through the work that you guys have done, that you've done, you've probably done this in other schools, so I'd be interested to know, or we'd be interested to know how well that works and what the pitfalls are. Certainly one of them could be a, a loss of community, um, you know, that connection between the school and the parish, which, as you can see here, and you probably learned when you were talking to people, is very strong. So I'd like, I'm curious what your reaction is to that. And then does that then also tie back to this, you know, today, St. Mary's Parish supports St. Mary's School. In the future, does St. Mary's Parish still support whatever the school is in this decoupled state? And I guess that's what we did for now. Great, I'll take a bit of an answer to that. So we work with lots of different schools and lots of different models, and probably a model that we're thinking about or we would recommend you investigate here, really nothing's off the table. But less of a decoupling and more almost of a, just a naming tweak. Um, a name like the phenomenon calls Catholic, that's not the name, but let's just say it doesn't keep somebody from another parish from saying, oh, I can go to that school. Because sometimes for some people, when they hear St. Mary Parish School, they may think, oh, this school is only for parishioners of St. Mary's. And you may go down the road and discover this isn't for us at all. We're going to stay true to who we are with our school name. It would mean continuing to support the school because it would still be St. Mary Parish School, even if it had a different name change. Well, yeah, my answer. I also know that uh, over the last few years, when I've attended the uh, Catholic Grade School dinner um, at the Archdiocese in Hull, the Archbishop has said publicly, annually, that he thinks every single parish in the Archdiocese should be supporting Catholic Grade Schools. And so that would mean that in the event that we've got I'll just pick them up because they're close. If we have three other parishes, I'm responsible for one additional one, that all parishes would get, I don't even know the word, but like a subsidy to support local, regional, Catholic grade schools no matter what. And that's on the Archbishop's agenda, unfortunately. He sets his, uh, sets in his retirement letter in March. But that being said, <laughs> it's a really important thing for the Archbishop that maybe the next bishop takes on as, let's do what we can to support and solidify Catholic grade schools by having everybody, even if they don't have a Catholic grade school, to support it financially. So. And the other thing I'd say to the second half of that question, it takes really strong leadership to continue to keep families connected to their parishes. Uh, a lot of outreach to the parishes, a lot of outreach to families, finding ways for the school to have visibility in the parishes that support it. It's a, it's a two-way street, and it really takes work. I'm speaking from a person who was a regional Catholic school principal. It took a lot of work to stay connected to the parishes. It was very to do that. Jackie, sorry, can you speak to any of the data collected on the feeling between uh, the, the school and the parish and the net? Yes, so that came up a lot. So you have kind of three camps here. I'm going to use the word camps. You have families who come to the parish school who don't have any affiliation with uh, the parishes in the area, but they like the school and they have found the school and they're attending the school. Now that you're part of Wisconsin School Choice, that, that might grow a little bit more. And it might be more attractive to families if the name is something that says, oh, I, I, I can go there. Um, you have families who belong to St. Mary Parish, attend the school, but are attending mass elsewhere. Because the liturgical style at Church X is different from the church liturgical style here, and they more relate to this one. You have families who love everything about the liturgical style, the charism at St. Mary Parish. They go to Mass here, they go to school here, and everything feels at home to them. So you really you really have three different groups. And so part of this would be, what can we do? What we want is for families to go to Mass. We want families to be involved in the church. We want families to attend Catholic education, Catholic schools, or Catholic formation. And however that's going to happen. And if a simple name change is going to free people up to say, I can go to this school and I can practice my faith here, here, or here, what a beautiful thing. So it's all to build the kingdom of God. Does that answer your question? What about, uh, for example, we 
we've been so connected to the Virgin Mother, St. Mary. Um, and if we can't keep her name, I mean, how can we? Um, we uh, maybe we'll come up, for example, Our Lady of the Falls. Th that was a neat name uh, that, in fact, our, our Gregory Brighton suggested, or not suggested, he, he had a title. There's a stained glass window uh, that shows Our Lady of the Falls with her flowing uh, gown and things like that as water. Can you summarize that? Yeah, so the, 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 there's a deep connection that the parish has to Mary. Uh, and then Our Lady of the Falls was the example of a great, great person who had a stained glass window and the importance of that. And those are all the important conversations that come apart in that explore. Remember that goal set of explore. You may explore and you may say, this isn't for us. We're as comfortable who we are, how we are, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. You may come along and say, you know what? It makes sense. We've done our homework, we've done research, we've explored this, and we're going to go, we're going to do a name change, but we're going to be true to Mary, and we're going to call ourselves our Lady of the Falls. Or uh, we're going to take out a new saint. Uh, it, it really varies area to area, but that's all part of the process. Conversations like that are critical to it. To say Mary is an important part of us, it's an important part of the mission of St. Mary. We don't want to lose that. So how can we incorporate it? Thank you for that. All right, next group or someone else. So I guess I'll have one question. We're really interested in what the plan is for building. So, building relationship with the other parishes in the enrollment management chapter, which you don't see the goals and strategies underneath it, but part of what we talk about is how can we continue to do outreach to families outside of St. Mary Parish to bring them into the school. And so, through parent, something we call parent ambassador work, uh, tailoring the marketing messages more to hit specific areas, specific people, families in public school, families in other church traditions, especially those parishes without a school are the ones that you really want to pull in. But is there anything else you can think of from the plan that spoke to that? Um, one of the ideas is to start... Take the microphone, please. Sorry. I usually, I have a pretty good outdoor voice, but um, one of the ideas was to start targeting at baptism um, as far as marketing to families in the other parishes. So that requires some hands because that's a four-year marketing plan for each kid. So, you know, if you're connecting every year at baptism and then maybe on the anniversary of their baptism the next year, and by the third or fourth year, they're getting an invite to open house. So just plans like that to reach out to those other parishes um, and try to get that communication going so that they're willing to share that with us, um, putting marketing folders out if they would give those out to their families who come for baptism training or sacraments um, as far as what our school has and offers. So there's lots of different ideas. We're just trying to put a group together that is smarter than me because I do not have a marketing degree um, that could help us to get that all laid out and get it going. It's really important. Word of mouth is the best way to do that. And so having members from those parishes that are selling the benefits of a St. Mary Parish School of Education. Because um, it, it's even beyond marketing. We use the words marketing, but it's really, we know that this is a jewel and we want to share. So thank you for that. Did I answer your question? I have one more. The leadership team director, could you explain, you know, how is that going to help and what's the Sure, certainly I'll understand what that means. Okay, so director of teaching and learning. Some schools call it director of curriculum and instruction. There's a trend across the country, teaching and learning. Um, with this one person, and what we find in schools across the country is it really takes a uh, dynamic, charismatic, faith-filled leader and a strong academic person to really lead a school well. And so it's hard for a person, most principals don't come with all the tools in that toolbox, and more schools are now diversifying and having a person dedicated to that teaching and learning, supporting teachers in the classroom, making sure student growth is happening, making sure those brightest students are going from here to here, making sure that that risk learner 
school principal informed of that process throughout. And that frees the principal up to do more uh, relationship building, relationship building with the other parishes, more of the enrollment, meeting with families, advancement, annual fund, uh, kind of the president principal model of a high school on a very small scale. So it's really looking for a skilled person to lead the teacher and the students. We have a lot of same stuff as everybody else. We hope our is good that these decisions are data and demographic based. That's encouraging. Um, really excited to hear about the non-member, religious <coughs> family, choice, younger families, all being offered, you know, a spot here. Um, and that is that that's a great community. You know, concerns, kind of the same thing, name change, not super popular in our group. <laughs> Thank you. 
85% is close, you can do all kinds of things. But 75 is really where you need to be financially. So continue to get the word out. Um, what was your last point? I had a comment about that. Um, I had mass participation. Oh, mass participation. Just an interesting thing. When we met with students, they were so pro mass. I loved it. We don't talk to kids that do that very often at the elementary. But they loved everything about mass. They loved going to mass. They, these were some of the eighth graders. And they had nothing but positive things to say about the mass experience here at school. So that was exciting. Yeah. All right, more comments. So um, we had a lot of similar items, uh, but people <coughs> weren't stressed the monetary gift that we're getting for the school, um, that, what that might bring to our future.
good information. So I think uh, some of our positives, uh, we really were excited about the idea of no debt uh, and uh, being able to take that money and be able to use it in a lot of different ways. That's really important because, of course, if you're not using that money for uh, debt relief, you can do some amazing things in other areas. So that's really important one for us. Um, also, meetings like this here are really important because you get to hear what people are saying or have concerns about, and that's something that if, without this kind of connection back and forth, it might be difficult to foster that community that we've been talking about all uh, the time. Um, so for Deltas, um, now this came up uh, from a couple of different people in our group. We had talked about uh, that when there were opportunities to sign up for extracurricular events or for a volunteer opportunities, that sometimes um, those opportunities when people reached out were not uh, necessarily given back. Um, and that's something that kind of really worries us is that if you have people who are excited to help out in the community or help out uh, at the school uh, to take advantage of that, and then that would really go, if we talk about the idea of uh, putting our name out there and that the best, you know, uh, work is from other people who are you know, using the word of mouth. Well, the way that people get excited about that is that they can actually stay in play. They can say, hey, I was involved in this, and this is what I can tell you. And you can see that right there at that moment, that's what people get excited. And that's when I think that it really would matter for everyone in our uh, building to draw other people out and who maybe don't know that St. Mary's exists, or don't know that St. Uh, Mary's is doing all these wonderful things. So uh, that was one of our things. We felt that uh, really more should be done to reach out to people who are excited about what St. Mary's has to offer. And one of our uh, questions, um, so have we done uh, a lot of research into why the enrollment dipped the way it did? I mean, we all know that uh, the pandemic caused some of those problems, uh, but we're also talking about, you know, that it looked like it, it was a little bit of a decline leading up to it as well. So we haven't done any research going into that. And then also, um, this is a great meeting, and we love the fact that we can uh, talk about some of these ideas. But um, after a year, where do we have those plans in place? All right, but where's our action plan? Okay, because again, um, we just want to make sure that we're all in the right spot, and that we can all say, okay, let's get behind one of these plans, and let's start moving forward. Because otherwise, it's going to be too late. We don't want that to happen. Excellent. I think a lot of schools fell into that COVID slug, slug where we stopped having parents and families involved in the school. And shame on us because you're our best ambassador. And we need you. And we need you to be out there. Not only investing in your child's education, your grandchild's education, but getting out there and spreading the good word, too. And so that certainly came up as an area for that surfaced. Uh, similarly, yes, recent surface as to why enrollment slumped a little bit. And so we won't go into those details because that's more confidential through focus groups, but we're aware of that and the plan addresses that and the action steps address that. And so certainly it's only going to be moving forward and upward from here. Um, if the plan is worked, and how do we make sure the plan works? We give the school a very specific implementation plan with measurable outcomes, timelines, who's responsible, the advisory council on senior, parish people, the parish council are going to be checking in saying, okay, where are we with our plan? It's on every agenda, so there's a real actionable plan in place to make it happen. And I would encourage you a year from now to check in with Mrs. Drader and say, can you update me on the plan? Hopefully, on senior, Mrs. Drader, you're having a town hall every year, and you get an update. Kind of the state of the school, state of the parish. That would be a beautiful thing. So, all right, any other comments, feedback that has not been sent? I know we're starting to get close on time. Uh, we just want to share a couple of thoughts. Our group was really interested in that as our group for future families that say they the school. So I think that offered a really great perspective. Um, I think in general, what gave us hope was the fact that we're having this meeting, that we have a strategy, that we identified that we need to increase enrollment, and we're taking really good steps to do that. So that was very exciting. Um, also exciting about the more streamlined fundraising idea, um, as opposed to having so many different events. We had two questions. Um, one, not sure if you would have an answer, but uh, there was a question as to whether the Aquinas School was seeing a similar trend in enrollment to St. Mary's. 
far as the tuition rate, um, we'll be getting that out to you real soon, but we have restructured it. So when you look at the new chart, it will show you uh, your tuition rate, the actual cost of what it costs us for an average student here, and then the difference of that. So then the difference is either made up through marriage subsidy, or um, if you want to write an extra check, you're welcome to do that, or through fundraising. So that will be kind of how that structure is. We actually said, I think it's around a 1% or less increase in tuition. However, this is why you don't have it yet, so I'm trying to write a letter that has to explain this very clearly. Um, it's going to look like a lot more because we rolled everything in. So you know, there was that 250 script. You paid for field trips separately. You know, all those little things that were in there. Your tech fees, all that stuff has been rolled into your tuition. So it looks like a bigger chunk, but it really is like 1% or less. I think if you have three children, I'm not sure there was I don't think there was chaps here. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it really is about the same. So we really worked hard to try to keep that reasonable. Uh, the other part of your question. The other part was about requirements. So I just want to talk about you made a good answer, but classical education tends to be a smaller um, demographic group. The schools tend to be smaller. Um, they're also part of the expense of school choice. And I'm pretty sure that they entered into it a little bit sooner than you. And so that's helped them grow enrollment. Um, and hopefully, you being in Wisconsin School Choice will also help you one tool in addition to all these wonderful ideas you have here to continue to grow your enrollment. Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.